Hi class, I am going over the rest of the Big Five output. So openness was reviewed in my first video. So I'm just gonna go in order and talk a little bit more about the output. Most people for the assignment reviewed extroversion, but I'm gonna go ahead and run through all of them. Um, so a common mistake or an error people had done is not including eta squared. So eta squared was something I had posted additionally here. Uh, I actually had to run it in the ANOVA data analysis programming to get that eta squared. I believe that's why I didn't have it in the initial um, output for you. Uh, so conscientiousness needed Welsh's because we had a violation of the homogeneity of variance or quality of variance, the Levine's test. So I noted that there. We didn't have any assumptions of normality. Um, this was just the general descriptors for you to get the idea for your means and standard deviations and reporting. If you were to create the F, your degrees of freedom between was three, the degrees of freedom within was 21.5, and that again, that's trying to adjust for we had issues with the quality of variance. And so it would have been F, com, or parentheses, three comma 21.5, parentheses equals 8.26, comma, P less than 0.01, comma, eta squared equals 3.344. 34.4% of the variance in conscientiousness is being accounted for by your different states. It's important to know that the ends here refer to state and not populations within that state. So this is kind of a dirtier analysis. It's also a dirtier analysis because I should have run this as a MANOVA, given that these five different populate um, personality characteristics were all with the same factor, our regions of the US. Um, but we are not doing a MANOVA in this class. That would be something you would run in um, graduate school if you're going into psychology or uh, public policy or perhaps even nursing. Uh, so uh, we did have that significant F, and this is showing you, whoa, it's Northeast. That's probably um, given us those differences. Northeasterners are lower in that conscientiousness. Again, 50 for all of your output, 50 was the middle of the road mark. So if the average score for that personality dimension was 50, they're right in the middle as far as like we are doing um, openness or not openness, conscientious or not conscientious, you're right in the middle. So lower, you're less conscientious, higher, you're more conscientious. Um, for our post hoc test, and again, I had to run the games how versus the two key because we we're using the Welsh, because we had issues with quality of variance. Um, so you can see I pointed out where those differences were. I would have expected you to have put that in your output. Um, and so then our next guy was extroversion. Extroversion was A-OK. -okay. Fisher is what you learned in the book to calculate um, your one-way ANOVA. Here, eta squared is 0.341, and there was no issues. Again, this is helpful when you're going through and describing your means and standard deviations with your post hoc. Uh, we do have quite a bit of variance going on there uh, for extroversion for the Northeasterners, and we're seeing the Westerners are on that lower side. When we go through and run the two key, again, I pointed out in the notes, these were the significant group differences. So yes, there were differences across the board with extroversion. Here's where those differences lie. Uh, for agreeableness, agreeableness turned out A-OK, -okay, but it was, oops, it was not significant. So anybody who did agree in agreeableness, you would have reported your F you would have reported it was not significant, and then you would have just described and talked about the means and standard deviations. It's not appropriate to um, go through and interpret any of the post hoc findings because you did not have significant differences for your um, agreeableness. And your agreeableness, I should have shared that eta squared with you, and I had not. Um, I'm gonna go back and look at the homework, and if you had reported agreeableness, I'm not gonna deduct for that missing eta squared since that wasn't included. I should have included that, I apologize. Um, with neuroticism, neuroticism, we violated our assumptions of normality, which is not good. 
Um, unfortunately, your the version um, for the Welsh you would use is um, for when you have issues with um, homogeneity of variance. So I probably would have had to have done some sort of transformation of the data, which makes it funky in interpreting the data. And so this was a messier one. Um, I think only one or two of you had done the, the neuroticism and I would have just had wanted you to carry on with the write-up and note that, which um, you had. Um, so with neuroticism, again, uh, differences here. Again, this data is harder to interpret it, but we do have a significant F. Um, you see you've got differences going on here, looking at these different groups. Northeasterners appear to be the group that's highest in neuroticism. Um, this is harder to interpret. Again, caution in doing so, but you would have said Midwest is different from Northeast and um, Northeast is different from West. Those were the two different groups where you're seeing di significance with your post-talk. Again, oh, we still have that issue of normality, which is important to note. Um, this was another case I should have shared with you, your eta squared. Um, and so here, this does report your eta squares. So openness for your eta squared was 0.343. Openness for your eta squared of extroversion was 0.341. Here's the eta squared for agreeableness, so you would have had to scroll down, um, 0.141. And again, I should have had it for all of the ocean in there. Um, so that's the quick recap for your homework. Um, again, I answered a lot of the questions on the discussion boards. I'm hoping that you revisit those um, as we move forward in the class. Um, the one way ANOVA is going to carry into the step you're learning about for factorial ANOVA. Have a good week.